Hello to everyone, especially the big fans. Uh, my name is Alois Zadražil. I'm technical consultant in INET Max company, and I'd like to show you today some last year tricky solutions which we created for our customers. Uh, I have to say, uh, it's great honor for me to stay here, and uh, <laughs> I've never had a dream of being speaker uh, at Zabbix Summit, at the greatest uh, event of Zabbix, but now it's reality for me. So uh, let me show you some solutions which combines a scriptized item, uh, JavaScript preprocessing, uh, script actions, uh, which helps us to automate some, some stuff, some tasks, and uh, so on. Uh, at the first, I don't like the words Zabbix can do something, Zabbix can't do something. I had many discussions with customers with uh, competitive uh, products, and uh, someone told me Zabbix can't do something. Uh, really, with uh, current advantages of uh, script type items and uh, uh, script actions, you can do many things which are not, which are not available uh, out of the box, but you can do that uh, inside your front end without external scripting and so on. So uh, it's like Murphy's Law. Uh, don't say it's impossible because there can be someone who doesn't know that it's impossible and he can do it. Yeah. So the, for the first challenge, I had a conversation with customer, and they told us uh, Zabbix can't discover the SNMP community string. Yeah, it's, it's something you can't guess community string from nothing. Uh, I asked them, what do, you really, what do you really need? And they told me that uh, uh, they have plenty of devices, and they uh, <laughs> doesn't know exactly which device uh, is configured with SNMP community string, but they know that uh, it's a community string from some list of community strings. So, yeah, that's not a big problem. I can write some application or external script and I can detect it with it and then uh, deploy hosts inside Zabbix. And but uh, that was denied. Uh, they need everything to be configured inside the big front end. No external script was allowed. Yeah? Okay, that was a challenge. Uh, the task definition for that, uh, plenty of devices come into Zabbix, detect community string, and uh, do much more stuff like uh, automatically link templates, automatically distribute these host to host groups, and uh, so on. Uh, so, I have to build some sort of automation which uh, uh, distributes these devices into target host groups, link correct templates, and uh, uh, extremely uh, important things detect the community string from the list of communities. Uh, I prepared this uh, diagram. So, uh, first of all, uh, external application creates uh, new hosts and uh, Zabbix start SNMP and ICMP detection. Uh, the first of all, ICMP, is it working or not? When ICMP is not working, uh, host is not accessible, host is moved to uh, host group of non-accessible uh, hosts and uh, later it's, uh, the host is automatically deleted and the deletion is locked inside the file. Uh, when ICMP is working, we have to check whether SNMP is working. When SNMP is not working, we have to check whether all communities from the list was tested. If not, we have to change community string and test uh, next one in an array. Uh, this can be done via API calls. Uh, I will describe this later. And uh, next SNMP checks will be done with next community string. And this can 
circle, circle around till one of these uh, conditions is uh, uh, evaluated as true. So whether, when SNMP is working, we can say our community string is found. We found the com correct community string, so we can uh, deploy this host to correct host groups, deploy the templates, and uh, we are done. Uh, if all communities from release was tested uh, and no community string was correct, uh, we realized that we don't have a correct community string or SNMP tests uh, on this device uh, doesn't work for some other reasons. So we move this host to the uh, host group with uh, failed devices for next uh, for next things. So that was the diagram, diagram, and uh, how to do it, how to check ICMP. I think <laughs> it's common for um, every one of, of you. Uh, ICMP simple check and some trigger function uh, with some parameters. I use maximum for. Uh, to, uh, for two checks, and, uh, and when it's true, I, evalu I evaluated that the ICMP is not working. How to check SNMP? It's, uh, it's not so easy like uh, ICMP because uh, you need to choose some, uh, some SNMP OID. I choose uh, system description OID because uh, I use uh, system description later for, decide, for decision of uh, type of a device and uh, for uh, decision for uh, template linkage, which template to link to this device. So I make some, may I create some ICMP checks. Uh, I configure triggers, which uh, checks whether SNMP is uh, working or not. It, you can check it uh, by uh, latest data, when the latest data is coming from a device, SNMP is working, but it fails. It can, it's, it's not so, so easy to check failed SNMP checks, but you can use uh, internal check uh, for availability of SNMP interface and combine it together. Uh, how to set community string uh, and how to change it? Uh, that's, that's about API calls. You have uh, used a macro, SNMP community, which you can use in interfa interface setup, and uh, I create SMMP community array, use global user macro, with an array of community strings. In reality, uh, a customer has maybe 12, 14 community strings, and uh, it's a cyclet around uh, to test it. Uh, the script is uh, executed by the trigger, uh, action action script and uh, uh, it uh, checks uh, current setup of SNMP community strings, uh, find this community string in array and use the next one. Yeah? And it goes on. How to check whether all communities were tested? Uh, I have last one in array uh, that is uh, called not found and when uh, Trigger condition found that the that device has a community string not found. It, the trigger starts and uh, realize that we tested all community string and realize that cycle completed and SMMP test failed. Yeah, that's uh, that's a principle of this functionality. Uh, this is uh, th these are uh, real graphs from. Uh, customer dashboards. Uh, this is uh, onboarding of 20,000 uh, hosts. It takes time because uh, there are plenty of uh, API calls and uh, plenty of checks uh, which have to be done. And uh, on the right side uh, graph, you can see uh, the most, uh, uh, the process which is 
really under pressure, it's escalator. Because you have to start many, uh, many shifting of, uh, of SNMP macro and many changes and the linking of templates. And, but it works. Last slide for this challenge, technical decisions. It's not so easy in the real world. There is much more complexity. You have to think about timing, uh, about timeouts of ICMP, timeouts of SNMP checks, update interval of uh, these items, uh, trigger settings, how many, uh, how many checks have to be done to decide that something uh, is functional or not. And you have to think about uh, proxy cache update and configuration cache update. Uh, last sentence, uh, you can use secret macro, but not in a whole, uh, whole process. Uh, you can use secret macro at the last time you, you set the, uh, you set the final, uh, final SNMP community. Okay, that was the challenge number one. Uh, challenge number two, uh, we need uh, high availability for proxy. We need, that was my communication. Customers told us we need all solution in high availability. Uh, discussion, uh, almost the same. We have competitive products that uh, can use high availability. Okay, Zabbix can do this nat natively, yet, yet. I hope uh, we will have uh, high availability and proxy level soon. And uh, I ask them, uh, for what type of checks you need high availability? And they told me, same as uh, previous challenge, SNMP passive checks. And I said, yeah, it's a uh, passive check. That's not a big problem. Uh, they need only automate switching proxy when one proxy fell to another proxy. Okay, that was a challenge number two. Uh, task definition, Zabbix proxy in high availability uh, mode. Uh, whole automation again have to be done inside Zabbix frontend. No external scripting, no, no uh, bash scripting, nothing at this level. Uh, and no advanced features uh, such as failback or load balancing were required. So, little animation, we have two proxies, monitored host, when the first proxy failed, hosts are moved to first proxy, when it's back again, and first proxy failed, it's moved again to second proxy. How to do it? You have to check proxy availability. Of course, uh, there is uh, there is an item for last access of a proxy. You have to check last access of proxy. And uh, common trigger, I think uh, many of you know that, fuzzy time, which compares the time. Uh, and you, it compares time from the last access. And uh, you have a trigger. You know that uh, proxy failed. And you start action. Action, action starts scripts, and scripts looks inside configuration. Configuration is inside uh, macro, and uh, macro, these macros, so only, only, I need only two macros. Macros with an array of proxies. I can imagine more than, uh, more than two proxies in array. There can be more than two, but the log logic of the uh, switching from one to another will be much complex. But uh, in a simplest way, you have two proxies in array, you got a proxy ID for failed proxy, and you can switch it to the next one. Uh, as I said, uh, item, proxy last access, trigger, uh, fuzzy time, and uh, some interval, this is one minute interval. For switching proxy, uh, this is part of the script. It's, the script is much longer, but uh, 
for a explanation, I have some parameters uh, as uh, input values. I can uh, check uh, current ID of current ID proxy. I can check the array and set uh, every host which is configured for one proxy to the another proxy. Uh, we spoke about it yesterday. Uh, there was uh, some discussion about uh, uh, failback balancing, uh, resolving active checks. It's, uh, it's not so easy, but it can be done with combination of auto registration for active agent. Yeah, but uh, uh, we stopped the work on this because of, uh, because of uh, roadmap and uh, uh, proxy uh, load balancing uh, in 7.0 that uh, I, I hope it will be in the 7.0. Okay, some screenshots. I have two proxies, uh, 94A, 94B. Uh, in this uh, dashboard, uh, 20, 2,000 hosts are monitored by uh, second proxy. When the second proxy goes down, last access is not uh, updating, and uh, the script automatically change uh, setup for a host uh, to be monitored by the first proxy, 94A. And you can see that uh, we have the same numbers for hosts and items on both sides because uh, uh, the data from proxy process are not available now. We have latest data, uh, maybe six minutes old, seven minutes old. So uh, we have only data from the variable proxy. And when both proxies are back again, we, you can see that uh, uh, on the second proxy, there is no device monitored by the second proxy. It took some time. You have to think about the uh, uh, trigger, uh, trigger timing for uh, proxy switching, and uh, uh, every change of the uh, of the proxy on a host uh, took some time because of. Uh, the, because of cache update intervals and proxy update intervals. It's, uh, this, this, uh, this environment uh, works on 6.4 where we can use uh, really, really uh, fast uh, cache update interval and proxy update interval, but uh, when I switch uh, proxies for uh, 10,000 hosts, it takes time because proxy have to load it, have to load it in memory and start to check it. It takes its minutes. Okay, that's all for challenge number two. Uh, challenge number three. Uh, three and four are really simple challenges, but uh, I, I spoke with some, some of you, some of my friends, and they told me uh, it's, uh, it's something uh, which can be useful for many people because Zabbix can do many things, uh, but you have to, you need to have, you need to have some fantasy and uh, try to use some uncommon things. So this is simple. Uh, someone told me we have to, we want to use single template for more setups. Uh, uh, example, uh, template for website, web, web certificate check. Yeah, you have template, out of the box template, great template, and uh, you link this template to host and uh, set up macro for, for uh, web server name. But uh, they have uh, servers with uh, 10 websites. 10 certificates, and they don't want to create 10 hosts for each of these certificates. So uh, how to do it? Uh, they want to configure it, configure it as simple as possible. And uh, I like to use something, I call it a static LLD or macro-based LLD. I think more, more, many of us use it in the same way. Yeah, it's not something 
something uh, hidden. Static LED, what, what, what's that? Uh, instead of using simple macro with one website, I create array of websites uh, separated by colon or semicolon or so what, and I create one simple uh, script item, and uh, I uh, create discovery that depends on the script item. I use script item because of uh, because of needs that uh, I want to have this macro uh, as simple as possible, because uh, you can put uh, the JSON inside this macro, JSON for preprocessing, but uh, uh, in the real world, uh, the macro will be set up by the administrator of server, not Zabbix administrator. So you need to have as simple syntax as possible. So. Uh, I create macro of this type, and uh, yeah, task definition, I told that before, s single host, uh, manual configuration, user-friendly, uh, certificate monitoring is the best example for me. Again, uh, a really quick uh, diagram, script item reads macros, uh, Dependent item create uh, D and uh, items are and triggers are created from prototypes. Uh, I created this template for certificates for Cloudflare check uh, with uh, for more DNS DNS uh, names. I created template for uh, interconnectivity checks because uh, customer wants to check connectivity between uh, database servers, and uh, every server needs uh, to know which connectivity test has to be done. Dashboard uh, from 7.0 uh, version, nice, uh, nice widget. Uh, I hope it will be possible to use this widget uh, in uh, in template dashboards and uh, with prototypes. Okay, last challenge. We need geomaps, nice widgets. Nice widget, I like it, it works really uh, well. It's uh, nice to present geomap and uh, customer says, we need geomaps. Okay, that's no problem. Where can I get a geolocation? Yeah, uh, we don't have geolocation, but we want geomaps. Uh, okay, but they told me uh, we have addresses it's in SNMP uh, location or ID. That was a challenge. So we need to convert addresses to geolocation coordinates and of course do it as automatically and as simple as automatically as simple as possible uh, there are plenty of uh, geo apis uh, available on the internet i tried some of them and uh, best result i uh, had with Google geocoding API. So I wrote really simple script, that's all. That's, that's all of the script. And uh, I use some of the scripting to convert uh, address into geolocation. Um, you have two possible solutions. You can use script item when you have uh, inventory and you have a location inside the inventory, you can use script item, read this inventory location macro, and uh, con convert it with, with dependent items to the geo geolocations and save it inside inventory. Uh, this, this is possible from 6.4. Before 6.4, you, you are not able to use inventory.location macro, and uh, you can do it uh, another way. You can check SNMP, uh, SNMP OID for location, and you can uh, create uh, preprocessing and use JavaScript preprocessing with same configuration and ask for the geolocation from this preprocessing. Uh, 
Uh, Preprocessing can be used uh, for many other checks uh, for uh, you, for uh, uh, discarding values that are not uh, that, uh, that are not to be used, that are not, not be checked. And uh, uh, one uh, one hint for you: if you try it with uh, Google Geo API, it's not free at all. You can do uh, I think 4,000 checks for free, and then it's paid service. So use Throttling and ask only once. Uh, save the location into geo coordinates, and uh, then uh, use Throttling with uh, to save money. To save money. Okay. So that was uh, challenge number four. You can see a result. Uh, it's a real result from customer. And uh, you can see that uh, many devices are on GeoMaps. And I, I like this widget. It's great. So last slides. Uh, you can meet us uh, everywhere on Summit. Uh, complete Zabbix team from Endmax company is uh, at the, is here you can ask every one of us and uh, uh, we will be at, uh, in the, in all events i think uh, so uh, for the gifts we have this year uh, this uh, certificate multiple certificate template is available uh, to download and uh, because uh, we are fan of fans of uh, AI, uh, our colleague, a great programmer, Thomas, uh, creates, creates a widget for uh, chatting uh, with ChatGPT inside Zabbix. You can see how it works. And uh, you can download it for free, and you can use it in Zabbix and try some chat uh, inside uh, Zabbix dashboard. Uh, you can scan QR code, uh, connect to our uh, repository, and download uh, some of the public stuff. And uh, you, you can see there uh, ChatGPT widget. You can uh, download the multiple website certificates. And you, it's not about the certificates. The principle can be used in many places. You can, uh, you can use it for everything you, everything you. Uh, everything you dream about. So, uh, if you scan it, that's all for me. Thanks for your attention, and have a nice day with the next events. And please don't go far. We will have a couple of questions. Uh, mostly about the proxy load balancing so one of the question was uh was since you used fuzzy time was uh the data losses while switching while detecting and switching notable yeah. or not yeah of course there, there there have to be data losses because you can't uh, when you access the uh, device every 10 seconds the switching is gone uh, uh, after a minute, and then you have really some minutes that the caches are online, that the second proxy is online. It's, uh, it can't be done without uh, data losses. And I think, I think there, the technology for, uh, for switching in every, every solution for, without data losses is really hard and really expensive. Yes, so it, you have to uh, be okay with this. I totally agree with that. And another one which we have is why the script approach and essentially front-end approach with two proxies was used rather than using uh, the approach of virtual APs and dynamic switching between them. Uh, virtual APs uh, are not configured inside Zabbix. And that was uh, one important uh, restriction for me. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't create uh, some 
some load balancer and so on in, in this environment. It has it has to be done inside the bigs, not uh, in an environment about uh, around. Yep, that makes total sense. Thank you very much for your answers and time. Yeah, thank you.